recently on Chris Cochran's and Big Clive's YouTube channels, they took apart this disposable charger. It's essentially a single-use power bank. Uh, inside they found that it was essentially just a boost converter connected to a 600 milliamp hour lipo battery. Big Clive noted that there was no protection board, so I guess the idea is that you would plug this into your phone and it would sacrifice this battery by over discharging it past the manufacturer recommended thresholds of 2.5 to 3 volts and effectively you put at risk uh, being able to recharge it back to the full capacity. So I picked up one of these disposable chargers myself to see what sort of modifications I could make in order to make it uh, not disposable. Uh, see if I can like charge it several times. So what component is missing is protection. So we have to slap on some protection in the form of these uh, protection boards that you can order from China. They have the standard DW01 chip connected to a couple of MOSFETs which protect against both being overcharged as well as over discharged. Now for the charging, yeah, I could use this the TP4056 and this one I've had to modify because um, when you order them from China it has a resistor value that it would charge this up at one amp which is probably way too high for the 600 milliamp hour battery. Uh, with this resistor still be reduced to about a tenth of that, I think. Now, this protection board has to be soldered in somewhere between the lithium polymer battery and the boost board. Now, there is a version of the TP456 um, charging solution that actually combines both the charging chip with the protection. As you can see here, the protection chips are included on the same board as the TP456. Uh, this I'm using here on this power bank because I accidentally put the battery in backwards and blew all the electronics inside, so I had to rebuild both the charging as well as the boosting part of it. And here's the final mod. I've managed to solder, well I first desoldered the, ba um, the battery from the boost board. And now the lipo poly battery is soldered to the protection board and the protection board is then connected to the boost board. And I've added these um, mini uh, micro J JSTs so that way I can now plug in this TP456 charger and I just managed to tuck the protection board underneath the boost board so the idea is that we flip this over and there's the switch can actually manage to fit this in the existing container. So we can just just about squeeze the battery in right next to it. I uh, might need to file a gap here for this wire. And this is by no means final. We might shorten these wires, rearrange things a bit, just to make this a bit more convenient to use. Another source of small lithium polymer batteries that I found is to order these mini MP3 speakers. You could also order um, mini Bluetooth speakers and uh, Bluetooth hands-free devices. Uh, they typically have some variant of a small lithium polymer battery. Now this one, an MP3 player, the way it would charge this battery is to connect the USB, USB port power through just a diode and resistor directly 
to the lithium polymer. So in other words, there's no charge control, no overcharge or undercharge, uh, under discharge protection at all. So with this protection board, I added it in exactly the same way as before and allowing for a separate charging solution via the TP456 using these um, micro JST connectors. Now the reason I'm collecting all these various small lithium polymer form factors of uh, battery is to use in these wearable projects. Now, this is a NeoPixel watch that I recently built and it's powered by one of those lithium polymer batteries that were recovered from a device um, not too different from this mp3 player a bluetooth speaker from china it didn't actually have a proper charging solution and had no battery protection which i've had to add again again in exactly the same way as before you, i could have ordered these on the internet in bulk to save on shipping if i order these individually quite often the delivery exceeds the price of the battery itself but the issue is that um, Royal Mail doesn't permit the uh, shipping of batteries by themselves. They, if you read their policy page, they s state that the lithium polymer batteries have to be shipped either in the device or along with the device. So ordering a, a Bluetooth speaker or a device that has the lithium polymer battery as part of it is one way of getting around that problem.